I I love my body. I love myself. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the Shaf Show, and this is a wealth and wellness podcast with me, Shaf the Dean, and the Dean Schwartz. Amazing. Yeah. Thank Today's you. episode is all about beyond the Zen Zone, incorporating spiritual practices into daily life. Nadine, any thoughts on this? Um, any thoughts? I mean, stress, stress, oh my gosh, sorry for my German English today. Okay, stress management, yes, yeah, very German sometimes, um, but it just comes out, it's okay. No, stress, you see, stress management, I was stressed, so it, whenever I'm stressed. Are I, you stressed? You've just been having a nice time in that. Yeah, no, in your just part if you. Last if, one. No, but if you ask me a question, I'm like, oh my ah, God, I have to think, I'm like, that's a stress I'm moment, sure. you know? And it might be not a negative stress moment. So um, we're talking today a lot about stress and stress management. Um, and I just want you to be aware there are different types of stress mm -hmm. in our lives. So, for example, there is positive stress when we are excited that something new is coming up, when mm -hmm. we're setting us a goal and we are yet not knowing how we will achieve it, but we are like having the urge of fulfilling our dreams, that's positive stress. And this is a good, it's always stress called. And then we have the de-stress, which is the negative one that keeps on eating us and kind of like really brings us down and um, can actually lead us to a lot of trouble, problems, diseases, and even it can lead to death if you don't listen to your body. Oh, mm. well, I have a question for you, Nadine. What are some effective strategies for managing stress in the workspace? Yeah. And particularly when the demands of your job feel overwhelming. I'm sure we've all been there before. I haven't. I used to work in uh, advertising. We had 15 or 16 deadlines in one day. And uh, some of them had to be delivered yesterday. And we had to pull all-nighters all the time. Uh, so we just drank a lot of booze and dealt with it that way. Wasn't a problem until I burnt out. So um, how can we not get there? Well, it depends as well on the stress level. But um, if you, for example, had a really stressful day and you were just running around 24 uh, seven and you cannot breathe anymore. Or for example, you had a very bad discussion with one of your team members and if you're just super angry and cannot breathe anymore and are not relaxed at all, what I do, the little biohack, what I'm all the time telling my clients, for example, is take a moment, uh, go out of the room, go out of your work area and breathe. Just mm -hmm. literally breathe for a minute. Take like four deep breaths in and out and just let everything be, um, but focus on your breath. And if you do that, for example, for 90 seconds uh, after you were angry at something, you should feel that the anger is coming down and that you sh you're not that angry anymore. So breathing is one of the key things what you actually can do when you're stressed. I mean, once upon a time, I had a job for 20 years and then I decided to retire. So um, I just stopped working. So that's another way to reduce stress. I decided to change my uh, profession um, and I decided to become a, a world-class yoni masseuse. So I started pleasuring women um, and helping women reach their full potential through um, a thing and an ancient art called yoni, massage yoni de-armoring. So I went from a six-figure corporate salary, very safe environment. Um, there was no other career outside of being a graphic designer, illustrator, art director, working my way up the corporate ladder. There wasn't an option of being a tantric sex guru. But then it happened, and, um, and here I am. So, yeah, if it's overwhelmingly stress, how about you uh, try something new? It's scary at first. I remember I had a full-time job, and then I uh, transitioned to freelance, and strangely enough, I started, make, started to make like way more money by doing less. Uh, then I transitioned from, oh, I'm making insane amounts of money. Maybe I could take three months off. And then I would take three months off out, outside of uh, the 12 months of your working working time. And then I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if I could do just work three months and take nine months off? Then I did that, and it worked as well. 
And and then I thought, I knew I could take full, like, not go back to advertising ever again. And here I am seven years later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but it's beautiful because I, I remember that I had a client who ha had actually burnout and um, they, the doctor or the psychiatrist um, recommended him to think of changing his job environment. So because whenever he or you come back from a burnout into your old working habits, um, you are triggered very often and then it just puts you back into the hole of stress and everything. So the point what you made totally makes sense. Um, you don't have to switch completely your career, for example. Take but a break. Take a break. I um, took some years off and I um, yeah. basically went down the tantric rabbit hole and I came back to my advertising job and I started sitting in an office again and I loved it. I really enjoyed it and in fact... I was better. I had this new brain that was like spiritually, tantrically um, enlightened in a way that I didn't have any limited beliefs anymore. Mm -hmm. And then I became a copywriter and I'm not, I, I, I'm dyslexic. So I actually started being a copywriter for Disney. So that was really interesting. And I basically came back home, back to London, to a city and really enjoyed being at work. Yeah, but that, that's really cool what you just said. Yeah, yeah. I like that point. Mm -hmm. So, another question, Nadine. How can we identify the root causes of stress and work... Um, blah, blah, blah. How can we identify the root causes of stress and work to address them in a healthy way rather than just treating it, treating the symptoms? Oh, basically, what's the root cause of all the stress and rather than going to the doctors and doctors prescribing you pills? See, but that's a funny thing, what you just said with your journey, because you said you took a break and you worked a lot on yourself. You did some spiritual practices, mm. some tantra practices, and I think it helped you healing the root cause of the stress because maybe mm. the job was not the real real stress thing there was maybe something deep inside what had to be looked at and um, uh, that is often the journey what we have to go through so what could be um, a way of finding out what is really the thing i really Beside pills and shutting just yourself down and not seeing where the yeah. point is i mean i remember going through my awakening when I had my crisis uh, back in 2014, and a lot of people around me were going through the same process, and they would uh, get their, their loving parents and their friends said, you need to go to doctors, you need to see a psychiatrist. A lot of them got given pills. I, was, I, I, I had the options of taking pills and being, um, I mean, I, I spoke to a psychiatrist from the NHS, and they, they, they made me want to take more drugs. <laughs> and really made me feel a lot worse. They didn't understand me uh, at all. So what I did was I found a therapist that actually mm -hmm. was more aligned to who I was. So I met a therapist who changed my life and she identified herself as a fairy. Mm -hmm. And back then I identified myself as a unicorn. And she's the one that taught me my self-love practice that I teach to all of my clients. Uh, she's the one that taught me um, about Tantra and how to get on that path of um, self-discovery. And she understood what a heartgasm was and how to get an orgasm in your heart I was randomly getting them and I could, I, I could only get it when I was drunk or on drugs. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, I want to get that when I'm sober. So she just knew what I was talking about. Whereas conventional medicine, and I did try AA, NA, um, and everything uh, that was available in London, and nothing worked. It made me worse, in fact. So finding the right people that could support you, that understand you, and that see you uh, is really, really important, having the right support network. The other people around me, they, they got sectioned. Uh, I go back to London to this day and they still are on the same pills mm. and they still have problems with their mother. <laughs> they didn't do the, the real healing. They don't know it's, it's an option. Where, I, where I'm from, it's all about healing, healing connection with your mother and your father going to going back home, forgiving them and like releasing all the stress around the pressure that my parents put me under uh, in order for me to be a success. So I'm a overachiever, mm -hmm. a perfectionist, and I'm sure a lot of people watching this could relate. I had to learn to surrender, let go of control and learn how to like just relax a bit. And when your nervous system isn't ready for relaxing, it's really hard to tell someone, hey, just chill, go on holiday. It's like, no, your brain's like hardwired to, to like complete 15 tasks in two seconds. Mm. So that's, that was your root cause. Yes. What you just said. Mm. Perfectionist, overachiever, and also an addict. So I was addicted. Mm. So 
no matter what I did, I would become like the best at it. Mm-hmm. So I had to transition from addiction to passion. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm the world's best universe use. Next question. What are some simple but effective stress-reducing techniques that people can try at home when they're feeling overwhelmed or anxious? Nadine, mm. you're an expert in this field. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, through my yoga journey, I would say definitely um, work with your body um, because the body can release a lot of stress as well. So if you're into movements, try some simple yogic practices, uh, watch a YouTube video, just uh, follow the movements. Um, If you're a dancer, put on some loud music, do some ecstatic dancing, just express yourself. Um, I'm a person who sometimes has to scream the stress out. So I just go by the lake, for example, or here in Dubai, I go to the sea and just scream it out like, ah, and I feel better. Um, what you could do as well is like I said, breathing already, proper breathing, uh, do a guided breathing session, um, that helps you calm down and, um, anxiety, for example, what I do is kind of like a stress reduction, um, meditation where you kind of like, um, force everything together. How do you say you tighten every tense and everything up for a second or for 10 seconds and then release with a big, big side of like good feelings. Like, uh, that's a new one. Yeah. It's like you, you. And what you can do is we use a thing called breath, sound and movement. And this is basic techniques to release stress. Animals, when they get attacked by other animals, they find a place on the grass and they shake out all the stress. I remember accidentally uh, walking, uh, like treading on the foot of a dog in uh, Westminster underground. And it, it wa- and it walked away and just shaked and it was just fine after that. So we have these animal bodies, we're mammals, but we've been so uh, conditioned to sit still that we've actually ended up um, becoming very still and not utilizing our bodies anymore. So what's happening is we don't know how to regulate our nervous system. Uh, The whole point of my job as a tantric practitioner is to bring uh, women into homeostasis, into getting them out of their head, into their body, regulating their nervous system through somatic body work, trauma release. And this is like such a basic thing that we should be doing, uh, which is called human connection, but we're so conditioned to be isolated. Mm. So I come from a community and I'll be going back to those communities pretty soon uh, where everyone's just touching everybody. We're just like lounging around and cuddling, super chill. And guess what? We're all super chill. <laughs> so when oh, you... Oh, Shaf, there's something else. You, you said something in our last event about the uh, um, cuddling, you yes. know, the hugging. That's stress relief too. Yeah. Explain that quickly. Yes. Yeah, so one of the easiest things you could do is hugging. And um, if you have a... You don't need a partner to be in love to hug someone. Uh, you've got friends, that's what friends are for. So what you want to do is you want to um, connect with your partner, hold each other longer than 90 seconds, um, heart to heart. I've designed a very specific <clears throat> hug that allows you to open up your heart. And this is a free breath hug. And you make the sound ha, which is the sound of the Anahata Chakra. And this uh, allows you to get out of your head, into your heart, vibrate the heart, so it awakens the heart and it brings a bit more peace to your body. And Virginia Satir, a very famous family psychologist, once said that you need four hugs a day for survival, um, eight hugs a day for maintenance, and 12, 12 hugs a day for growth. And this is why all the spiritual hippies are always hugging and they it's because you know it there's a there's a reason to it so that's one very good thing that you can do shall we show them a proper yes, hug? yes let's show them a proper hug so you go heart to heart and you make the sound hard together
Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> so we've had people come to uh, these events we put on and they have this experience where they hug someone. And now these people aren't used to hugging people. The, the only time they really hug someone is when they're hugging their mum or dad or um, hugging a girlfriend or a boyfriend, but they don't know when they're going to be in a relationship next and they could wait a lifetime for their life partner to show up. So <laughs> when we create these safe spaces where people come together and relax their nervous system, they feel a sense of oneness and they literally dissolve into nothing. And they could hear the vibrational frequencies uh, together so you could actually feel, hear and experience actual oneness. Easy techniques. There's so many techniques that we've developed um, that's so uh, translatable into the workplace. Like I was, when I was living in Sweden, I'm hired to go into the workplace to relax uh, co-worker people's nervous systems by giving a 10 minute chair massage. So I go in there, give them a massage, but I do these very specific techniques and then they become more productive for the rest of the afternoon. Google so, does that, for example, they offer free massage services. Yeah, it's very important. Do you know why? Because they like that all the time. Yeah. That's why it's so important to do some yoga. Exactly. It's stretch. Movement practices. Movement. Breath, sound and movement are key to uh, relieving stress. And meditation is very good to calming your thoughts. Exactly. And if you have trouble meditating at all, start with the guided meditation. Yeah, there's many different types of meditations you can do, especially at your, if you're at work. You could listen to um, certain frequencies of music and you could also, instead of having your thoughts running around in your brain, you could listen to motivational speakers or you could listen to, uh, and these are just simple hacks um, that anyone could implement like now. Um, motivational speakers or inspiring audiobooks and then moving on from that, if your brain is like, over stimulated and overwhelmed then you need to get some stillness in there and finding the gaps between your thoughts and um, expanding that um, happens through meditation and breathing deeply by the way guys um, i see that here some of the questions are popping up so if you have any questions for us um, just please continue posting something here or dm us we might do a q a session maybe so yeah let's see yeah. So meditation is one thing, especially if you're at the desk, make sure you uh, go on regular breaks. And um, another great way to um, ground yourself during the work, work time is to find some uh, green grass and some actual earth. Take your shoes off and do some earthing. It's scientifically proven to discharge all that uh, electricity inside of your body that it gets built up. Oh, go for a walk. Go for a walk. Um, it's nice that you said about some emotional release tools like screaming in the oceans. You can also do hand screams. So that's a really good way to release any anger or frustration that you might have towards your boss or your work colleagues. And um, yeah, there's, there, there's a billion different tools that you could use. Uh, we, we know a lot. So if you want to know more how to Get into the, the zen zone at work, reduce stress and anxiety. I've lived through it uh, and I've left society and I've come back again. So I'm very much a mentor in all of this as I've got proven strategies and techniques on how to relax your nervous system, reduce stress and uh, come into a place of stillness. And uh, have it, have, like my speciality is having a, um, a relaxed nervous system. That's, that's my jam, that's my thing. I've trained myself to do it. So um, yeah, if you want to know more, find me on sacredsexualawakening.com or instantsexbook.com or at Shaftedin on Instagram or YouTube. And where can we find you? So yeah, you can find me on YouTube or on Instagram. My name is Performance Alchemist. And if you have trouble like finding your abilities and your power and your performance skills, um, I can help you with that and that not just this because i can balance you beside of that so you find your inner balance and then you will be performing at your best version ever so if you want to do that step just write me text me i have various programs happening right now so yeah it would be lovely to get in touch with you 
So thank you very much for everybody tuning in and we'll see you next time for the next Wealth and Wellness episode of Shaft and Nadine. Take care everybody. Bye. Bye.